to Strange Historical Tales. Today we're diving into a baffling mystery from 12th century England. In the small village of Woolpit in Suffolk, two children with startling green skin suddenly appeared, wearing strange clothing and speaking a language unknown to the local villagers. The children claimed to come from another world entirely. While this may seem like mere folklore, this intriguing event was recorded by two respected chroniclers of the time, William of Newburgh and Ralph of Coggeshall adding a layer of credibility to this bewildering tale. Were these children a phenomenon beyond explanation, or is there a truth hidden beneath the legend? Let's uncover the secrets of the green children of Woolpit. In the shadowy depths of medieval Suffolk, amidst the dense fogs that often shrouded the village of Woolpit, a peculiar and unsettling event unfolded that would etch itself into the annals of the strange. It was during the harvest season, a time when the village was abuzz with activity, that the unexpected visitors were found. Nestled near the ominous wolf pits, traps set by the villagers to protect their livestock from the lurking dangers of the wild, two children were discovered. These were no ordinary children. These young ones bore an unearthly hue, their skin a vibrant shade of green that mirrored the overgrown moss of the forest floor. Clad in garments of unfamiliar fabric and design, they spoke in a tongue that was alien to the ears of the wolf pit villagers. Frightened and disoriented, these enigmatic children were like specters from another world, inexplicably transposed into the medieval landscape. The villagers, governed by a mix of superstition and curiosity, took them back to their village, where their presence became the subject of bewildered whispers and fearful speculation. Unable to communicate and deeply unfamiliar with their surroundings, the children initially refused all food offered to them, amplifying the villagers' intrigue and concern. It wasn't until they were presented with raw broad beans that they showed any willingness to eat. These beans became their sole sustenance, the only familiarity in a strange new world. As weeks turned into months, a remarkable transformation began to unfold. Gradually, as they adapted to a more conventional diet, the children's skin lost its green hue, revealing a more natural tone underneath. This change sparked a myriad of speculations among the Woolpit villagers. Was their initial green color a sign of illness, or perhaps malnutrition? Or was it something more mystical, a marker of their otherworldly origins? The adaptation of their skin color brought its own sorrows. The boy, who had always been the more fragile of the two, struggled with the transition. Despite the care and attention he received from the villagers, he remained sickly, and his health continued to decline. Tragically, he succumbed to the earthly ailments that plagued him, leaving his sister to face the future alone. His death deepened the mystery of their origins and left a lasting imprint on the collective memory of Woolpit. As the seasons turned in the village of Woolpit, the green hue that once defined the girl faded, just as the strangeness of her origins began to blend into the fabric of daily life. With the boy's untimely demise casting a shadow over her existence, she found herself alone in a world that was both a sanctuary and a cage. Under the care of kindly villagers, she slowly learned to speak the language of her new home, each word a bridge built between her mysterious past and her uncertain future. As her tongue untangled the foreign sounds of English, her story began to unfold, a narrative as curious as the twilight realm she spoke of, a place she called St. Martin's Land, where the light of the sun never breached the eternal green gloom. The more she spoke, the more her otherness seemed to diminish, yet in her words a faint trace of another world lingered, compelling her listeners to wonder if her tales were mere figments of a child's imagination or whispers of a hidden truth. She described a land where all was green, the trees, the ground, even the sky, a mirror of her own eerie visage. As she grew older, her integration into the village marked a transformation. She was baptized, shedding her mysterious origins as she embraced the rites of her new community. Named Agnes, she eventually wove herself into the very social fabric of Woolpit, her marriage to a royal official a testament to her complete assimilation. Yet some say her eyes retained a hint of green, a vestige of her enigmatic past not even time could fully erase. Agnes lived out her days in the village, her early years of verdant mystery giving way to the mundane ebb and flow of rural life. But the people of Woolpit never quite forgot the enigma of her arrival. To them, she remained a living bridge to the unknown, a gentle reminder that their world was but a small patch in the vast tapestry of existence. 
as the tale of the green children of Woolpit has been passed down through generations, so too have the theories that attempted to unravel the mystery of their origin. These theories range from the fantastical to the historical, each offering a different lens through which to view this perplexing story. Extraterrestrial Theory One of the more sensational explanations posits that the children may have been extraterrestrials from another planet. Proponents of this theory point to their green skin and unfamiliar language as indicators of a non-earthly origin. This idea taps into broader themes of alien visitation, suggesting that the children could be early documented instances of contact with another world. Subterranean Beings Another intriguing theory suggests that the children might have come from a subterranean world, a concept found in various mythologies around the globe. According to this view, the children accidentally found their way to the surface, emerging from one of the many caverns that pepper the Suffolk landscape, explaining their disorientation and unfamiliarity with the sunlit world. Flemish Orphans A more grounded hypothesis argues that the children were actually Flemish orphans, perhaps lost during the tumultuous social and political upheavals of the medieval period. Their green skin could have been the result of malnutrition, specifically chlorosis a condition known to turn the skin greenish due to anemia. Their strange language might simply have been Flemish, unintelligible to the local Saxons. Each of these theories reflects the enduring fascination with the green children and the human desire to find meaning in the mysterious. Whether rooted in extraterrestrial lore, earthbound explanations, or psychological projections, the story of the green children invites us to consider how such tales are woven into the fabric of our collective understanding of the strange and the unknown. As we reach the end of our journey into the enigmatic tale of the green children of Woolpit, we are reminded of the power of mystery and myth to ignite our imaginations and challenge our understanding of the world. Whether visitors from a distant world, lost children of history, or symbols of change in a medieval society, their story continues to captivate and inspire debate across the centuries. What do you think about the origins of the green children? Are they remnants of a forgotten past? Or could there be a grain of truth to the more fantastical explanations? Share your thoughts and theories in the comments below. If you enjoyed this dive into one of history's most intriguing mysteries, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Strange Historical Tales. Hit the notification bell to never miss out on our weekly explorations into the unknown and the unexplained. Join us next time as we unravel another chapter of the strange and the historical.